8, Lesson 1, Create Performance Tasks. For this first lesson, we're going to review the task, and we're going to take some looks at samples that have already been submitted and scored to see what needs to be submitted and how it needs to be scored. Sometimes seeing what somebody else has done and what's good and what's bad makes it a little less intimidating. Now, we're going to start looking more deeply at this task, focusing on specific focusing specifically on understanding the different components of the create performance task and how the task will be uh, will be scored please do not worry you are you already have so much of the knowledge and skills that you need to do well in this task the hardest part might just be understanding what is required of you what do you have to turn in first we're going to read the task description and look at some examples and how they're scored that's this first lesson now, I want you all to access the scoring guidelines and the task instructions. You can click on it and you can follow along on, from code.org. We're going to review these together. Um, if it's helpful to you, you most certainly may print these out, um, but you definitely should have them downloaded so you can access them on a regular basis as you work through this process. Now, First, we're going to look at the task instructions. This is in the booklet, and it does say that it's effective fall 2020. Um, the following pages contain student-directed version of the performance task guidelines that you can print out or copy, share with your students. I'm telling you that since we're virtual, you're going to get to download them and look at them. Now, sometimes if we were in class, I might have you all read this silently, and I could go around and make sure everybody's reading. I also know that online, mm, sometimes it's just too distracting. So we're going to do a quick read through of the important sections. First, programming is a collaborative and a creative process that brings ideas to life through the development of software. In this task, you will design and implement a program that might solve a problem, enable innovation, explore personal interests, or express creativity. Your submission must include the elements listed in the submission requirements section below. You are allowed to collaborate with your partner or partners on the development of the program only. That said, understand that you each have to identify the parts that you wrote. You want to make sure that you have code. You write code. You write code that has all the parts. If you're doing some kind of crazy big item, collaborate. I would say your best bet, though, is to mm, maybe not collaborate so much and do your own, because then you will have written everything that you need to write. That said, you are allowed to collaborate on the programming part. The written response and the video that you submit for this task must be completed individually without any collaboration from your partner, partners or anyone else. That means nobody can proofread it. Nobody can check it. Okay, you got to do it on your own. Um, part of the problem with collaborating on the code is mm, it, it gets very dicey as far as making sure that you answer the questions on your own and that you write the words out by yourself so that you don't get accused of any kind of uh, either plagiarism or collaboration where collaboration is not allowed. Um, like I said, and it's not just me, the college board has looked at uh, submissions and they have flagged them and given students zeros for the whole create task because the two submissions basically when they put them through copying or whatever it is in English that you put it through, it's too much alike. So please just mm, be careful, okay? So now you can develop the code segments used in the written responses, parts 3B and 3C, with your partners or on your own during the administration of the performance task. Please note that once this performance task has been assigned as an assessment for submission to the College Board, you are expected to complete the task without assistance from anyone except your partner or partners, and then only when developing the code. You must follow the guidelines for completing the Create Performance Task section below. Understand the only thing I can help you with is the directions. 
that's it. You must figure other stuff out on your own. Now, the general requirements, you will be provided with a minimum of 12 hours of class time to complete and submit the following. Now, if we are um, remaining virtual or even on the hybrid, you have an hour and 10 minutes, two days a week, okay, as a minimum, or on Mondays, and then Mondays are the uh, asynchronous days, okay? So essentially, we will assume that you have three hours of time to work. So that means you will have four weeks of instructional time to work on this during class time. Your final program code created independently or collaboratively. Now notice that the next two have just a single person because it's individual. A video that displays the running of your program and demonstrates functionality you developed created independently. Written responses to all prompts in the performance task created independently. You must answer the questions on your own. Scoring guidelines and instructions for submitting your performance task are available on the AP Computer Science Principles exam page on AP Central, and it's also um, available on code.org. Note, in non-traditional classroom environments, um, which we have right now, if it's something besides the four weeks, I will get back to you and let you know. Um, if should we experience any kind of snow, rain, flood, hurricane, it's still just four weeks. We Normally it takes around three weeks, but giving you a little bit more time, so we need to get it done in that period of time. Now, submission requirements. First, program code. Created independently or collaboratively, you will submit one PDF file that contains all of your program code, including comments. You need to use comments. Include comments or acknowledgments for any part of the submitted program code that has been written, that has been written by someone other than you and or your collaborative partners, okay? Good idea with anything that you write. Let's say that you do collaborate with somebody and you write one function and they write another function. Note that in a comment. If you pull code from a textbook or from online, that's okay as long as you acknowledge it, okay? Now, that said, you need to know that the things that you're going to be answering will need to be answered about code that you wrote. So, just as an FYI, make sure that you are writing some of this code. If you develop an app collaboratively, be sure to use comments in order to denote who wrote and developed which blocks of code or functions. Now, in your program, you have to have certain things. You must include student developed, that means you or your partner, code that contains the following, instructions for input from one of the following, the user, including user actions that trigger events like click button clicks, mouse hovers, a device, an online data stream, a file. So you've got to have some kind of instructions for doing this input. Use of at least one list or other collection type to represent a collection of data that is stored and used to manage program complexity and help fulfill the program's purpose. Now, this is important. The data abstraction must make the program easier to develop. Do not use a list if it makes it harder. Find a way to use a list or a data abstraction that makes your program easier to develop, not more difficult, okay? Uh, future changes to the size of the list would otherwise require significant modifications to the program code, that's a problem, okay? You want something so that it makes your program more nimble, not more difficult. At least one procedure that contributes to the program's intended purpose where you have defined the procedure's name, the return type, one or more parameters. Note, that the implementation of built-in or existing procedures or language structures such as event handlers or main methods are not considered student developed. Do not think that an on event, if it's on event, it doesn't count. On event doesn't count. Don't think that that is your procedure. It can't be the main procedure either. It has to be its own separate little function, something that you could put into a library. 
okay? Think about library functions. You need an algorithm that includes sequencing, that's step-by-step, -step, selection, an if statement, and iteration, a loop, that is in the body of the selected procedure. So this procedure that has a name or return type and a parameter has to have an if statement and a loop in it, okay? You have to obviously call your develop procedure. If you just write a procedure that has all this stuff in it, but you never call it from your main function, then that's going to be a problem. Okay? You need instructions for output, tactile, audible, visual, or textual, based on the input and program functionality. All this must exist in your code. Now, your video that you will create independently okay, must demonstrate the running of your program. Collaboration is not allowed during the development of your video. You need to, your video must demonstrate your program running so that you input information to your program, at least one aspect of the functionality of your program, and the output produced. Your app, you don't have to demonstrate everything that your app does, but just one thing. Your video may not include any distinguishing information about yourself, not your name, age, nothing, but just your code, right? You may not have any voice narration, although you could have text captions that um, state what's happening or what you intend to have happen. Your video must be either an MP4, a WMV, AV, or MOV format. No more than one minute in length, no more than 30 megabytes in file size. Um, the one minute, please, if you go one minute and one second, do not delete it. They're not going to kill you on it, all right? They're not going to get all upset and mark you down. What they don't want, remember, they're going to be grading thousands of these, so they do not want you going over a minute. So pretty much try to shoot for 50, 55 seconds, okay? Now, written responses created independently. You submit your responses to prompts 3A through 3D, which are described below or in the following slides. Your response to all prompts combined must not exceed 750 words. Program code is not included in the word count. This is just your explanations. Collaboration is not allowed on the written responses. Instructions for submitting them are available on AP Computer Science Principles exam page. Now, 750 total words. If you find that you wrote mm, 775 words, please do not go crazy trying to scale it back, okay? If you find that you wrote 1,000 words, uh, you might want to shorten some stuff up. They are not going to sit there and count individual words, however. So a few words over, not a big deal. Lots of words over, problematic. Okay, 3A, provide a written response that does all three of the following. Notice this is approximately 150 words for all three parts combined. You need to describe the overall purpose of the program. That should be one to two sentences. Describe what functionality of the program is demonstrated in the video. If it's a game, maybe you show winning the game. If it's looking up some piece of information um, or taking a quiz, tell what it is. Again, one to two sentences. Describes the input and output of the program demonstrated in the video. One sentence for the input, one sentence for the output. And by the way, when you're writing these, make it easy for the person to give you the point. Okay, the purpose of my program is to, boom, you've said the overall purpose of the program. Okay, in the video, you will see the program, you know, playing, you will see a demonstration of the program or the app playing a game where the user wins or loses or ties. Um, the input is, the output is. Be very specific. 3B, capture and paste two program code segments you developed during the administration of this task that contain a list or other collection type being used to manage complexity in your program. Notice, capture and paste two program code segments. The first program code segment must show how data have been stored in the playlist, stored in the list. So this would be maybe your declaration. The second program code segment must show the data in the same list being used. 
such as creating new data from the existing data or accessing multiple elements in the list as part of fulfilling the program's purpose. So do two different places. Again, one maybe where it's declared, one where you're looping through, looking for something, changing something, okay? These are your code segments. These don't count for the words. This is where the 200 words come in. You're going to provide a written response that does the following. Identifies the name of the list being used in this response. The name of the list is, boom, what is the name of the list? Describes what the data contained in the list represent in your program. Again, one sentence. The list contains all the scores from the users for whatever, or all a person's grades, or whatever it is. Say what it is. You don't have to get super detailed explains how the selected list manages complexity in your program code by explaining why your code why your program code could not be written or how it would be written differently if you did not use the list okay a lot of times in here this would be if i did not use a list the program would have to have multiple variables with similar names to hold similar data and would result in many more lines of code, thus increasing the complexity of the program. Okay, boom, you've said how not having the list would increase the complexity. Again, you need to use specifics from your code, but that's the gist of what they wanna see you saying. Next up, 3C, capture and paste two program code segments you developed during the administration of this task that contain a student developed procedure that implements an algorithm used in your program and a call to that procedure. Um, the first program code segment must be a student development procedure that defines the procedure's name and return type, contains and uses one or more parameters that have an effect on the functionality of the procedure and implements an algorithm that includes sequencing, selection, and iteration, all three of those. The second program code segment must show where you, where you have called it. Then, you need to describe in general what the identified procedure does and how it contributes to the functionality of the program. Then you need to explain in detail how, this, how the algorithm implemented in the identified procedure works. Your explanation must be detailed enough for someone else to recreate it. Now you're going to use 200 words to have two calls to this procedure. And each call has to be different, so you're passing different information. Maybe you're passing something that is found in a list, something that's not found in the list. The condition tested by the first call, condition tested by the second call, the result, result of the first, result of the second. Again, these are not long. Now, please know the use of media, example, video, images, sound, data, information, evidence, or program code created by someone else in the creation of a program and or program code segments without appropriate acknowledgement, i.e. through citation, through attribution, through attribution, and or by reference is considered plagiarism. A student who commits plagiarism will receive a score of zero on the performance test. There is no redo. There is no retake. Your parent can talk to me all they want, there is zero that I can do about it. This is the college board, and if they detect plagiarism, it will be a zero. To the best of my ability, I will ensure that you understand how to ethically use and acknowledge the ideas and work of others, as well as the consequences of plagiarism. Um, your individual voice should be clearly evident, and the ideas of others must be acknowledged, attributed, or cited. So if somebody else wrote the code, you can say that. Let yourself be heard. During the final submission process in the digital portfolio, you will be asked to attest that you have followed the guidelines. Now, at this point, you should read the remainder of this document on your own, but those are the big pieces. Now, let's move over to the scoring guidelines, okay? And at this point, I'm going to pause this video so that it can be in actually three parts. That way, none of the parts are too long. All right, so in case you want to go back and look at something, you can.